Okay, do I have the right screen now? Yay! <laughs> this is kind of fun. 3 p.m. So, um, so check it out. Um, have you ever heard of this brand of watch before? Because I'm going to be talking primarily to you, bro, because you're the only one on here. And we've talked before. Have you seen this brand, Doxa? Oh, so you haven't seen it before. Okay, well, I've, I've heard them mention it on the channels a couple of times, but they never went any further than just mentioning the name. And I was mentioning to my cousin, my cousin uh, lives close to me here in California, and he's into watches. He, um, he doesn't have a huge collection. He's got a couple of, couple of watches, but he likes watches. And he mentioned Doxa to me because I had mentioned to him a couple of days ago that I went to IWC up the street here and I was looking for a beater watch because my Rolex sub date, my Rolex black ceramic is my only beater watch, my only water watch, and it recently got damaged. So um, I took it to Rolex for a full service polish repair and they're just going to have to replace, fix the crown a little bit. Didn't get damaged that bad. Easy fix. But when that sucker comes back, all beautiful and polished from Rolex, I don't want to, um, I don't want to take it in the ocean anymore. You know what I mean? Cause I, I kind of feel like I want to service my watches maybe one time ever, at least one time in 15, 20 years. And so, uh, that being said, I am looking for one, uh, one watch to be designated as a beater slash saltwater ocean watch because, um, I intended to use all my watches, but they all go up and they all went up in value. So now I kind of don't want to take them in the water. So long story short, I was at IWC. And I found, uh, what was it at IWC that I found? Um, let's see. At IWC, garage door. At IWC, I saw what's called the uh, Aqua Timer right here. Let me pull it up. Right there. It seems like there's a delay when I click on the buttons. Let me, let me back out. Oh, really? She just started working for IWC? Where at? I mean, in Germany? She actually lives in Germany to work for IWC or like a boutique here in a boutique in your country. This one right here, this is the one that I was looking at. You see how it's $5,600 and that's M at MSRP at the boutique. So I mean, I'm, I've, I've seen secondhand similar price IWCs for $3,500. Swiss on the French side. So, So I figured if, um, when I saw this, this jumped out at me, you know, and honestly, the pictures here don't do it justice. Nothing does until you look at it in person. So this is the one that I was, uh, telling my cousin that, Hey man, I'm really interested in this as a, as a good ocean watch. Can you do that later, please? I'll turn it on. I'll turn it on. No, you won't. All right. 
Yes. And uh, so anyway, when, when I when I was showing him this one, he said, hey, you know, check these out. These are really cool. You're going to like them. These are some original divers. And I started checking it out. And lo and behold, I fell in love with these suckers. So let me show you. Um, this is the Doxo website. Now, yeah, and the price is pretty attractive, right? Right? So if you go all the way down, there's the Doxa. There's the main website, which shows you the Doxa full collection. They have like a couple of websites. I guess it, I haven't figured it out 100% yet. But if you scroll down, here's their collection. This is all the watches they've got. They've got the subs. They've got the classics, the actives, and the premiums. And these are all made, manufactured with, yeah, right? These are all manufactured with ETA movements. Um, so I wasn't interested in any of these. You can look at them, but it, it was the subs that I was interested in. So I actually want to go back to the screen here because when you go to the page of the subs, you can, so let's go through each one of these. So you've got sub 300, that's the number here is um, reflective of, represents the depth the watch can go in meters. So this is a 300 meter watch, that's a 1200 meter watch and so on. I mean, this is equivalent to a, a a sea dweller. I mean, 4,000 meters, six, 6,000 meters, that's like 18,000 feet. So anyhow, um, here's these ones. The professionals. What the hell? Right here, the professionals. So the, the professional, the, the, the 300 T's, these 300 T graphs have chronographs. I'm not into the chronographs in a diver watch, but they do have them. They have the professional model and they have the shark, hunt, shark hunter model. You see that? Now they're really known for these orange dials. I found out apparently they're really known for the orange dials for diving purposes. The next one is the 1200 meter. Now these don't have the, um, the chronograph sub, sub registers, uh, Caribbean model. There's the professional model. Uh, pay attention to the outside bezel. Look what it says here. And, and, and look at, these all have helium re release valves. You see here? They all have the helium release valves. So you see in 1969, Doxa released the first helium release valve, equipped dive watch for sale to the general public. I mean, that's even before Rolex then, right? So when you look down here, 100% Swiss made, self-winding movement. I mean, look at the price. That's a 1200 meter watch. I'll leave that up there so you can read it a little bit. Now, what's interesting here, let me tell you this. This is the exact same movement as what's in that IWC that I just showed you. Okay, now you see how it's, uh, there's a, a huge discount on this one. I mean, this one really lures you in. I mean, shit, it's like $600 discount, man. Um, now, when I was reading about buying this, buying the watch, uh, they don't have any ADs. There's no uh, there's no dealers. You have to buy it directly from them. Um, there is a New York contact number right here. And I'm going to call them tomorrow. And I'm going to ask if I can get some kind of a coupon code 
and ask about the pricing because somewhere I read that you have to pay the VAT tax from Europe, which is 25%. So I'm going to find out all the lowdown on that information tomorrow. But it doesn't seem like that stops a lot of people here from buying this watch. Okay, let's look at some of the other ones and then I'll get to the one that I like. Here's the the, the 1200 we got. So you got you got the chronographs. Okay. You got the non-chronographs starting with the Caribbean model. You got the professional model, which has that beautiful orange dial, which is what they're really well known for, apparently. Oh, I see you're on the phone. Cool. Um, is there a way for me to make this a little bigger? Let me see here. Might as well try to learn. Is there a zoom in feature? Oh, yeah, there is. How's that? Let's see if that worked. Did I zoom in? Okay, that worked. So now let's see if I can select the, here we go. Okay, so let's do, I can do it this way. Okay, so now there is in this 1500 meter version, 1200 meter version, there is also the Shark Hunter. So if you like the black dial, you want to be more traditional, you got the black dial. Oh, um, I don't know how to explain it, but do you see the outer dial bezel, how it has another set of numbers that you've never seen on any other watch? That's explained here the original no decompression dive table or the new sapphire elapsed dive time with luminous numbers so yeah lots of choices so this lets you know how much you can go up at a time in order to avoid the bends okay lets you know how many feet you can go up at a time in order to avoid the bends. I mean, how clever. It's got two working rings. Isn't that cool? I mean, that's what a diver needs. Okay, now let's go to the next one. I think this is the 1500 meter. Fifteen hundred professional. There's that beautiful orange dial. And I'm going to show you the one I like too, which is kind of not like any of these. And then there's the Sea Rambler version of this. Now, these are the ones I like. The Sea Ramblers. I like that silver dial. What, what I like is the orange hand. The large orange minute hand. That's what I'm digging on. And I don't know if you noticed that, that cushion case right here. You know what a cushion case is? It's really cool. So it's going to be completely different than any other watch that you have. And then if you... Now, now here's the ones that I liked. Yeah, nice shiny dial. Look at... Um, 
these are called the recreational divers, the 300 meter watches, which I mean, who's going to go 900 feet anyway, but these are called the recreational divers. Now, all of the watches you see here are COSC certified. However, these ones here in the 50th anniversary mark are not COSC certified because they only made 300 of each of these and they didn't make enough to worthy going and have them tested. So whatever, I'm buying it for the look, I'm buying it for the be a beater watch. You know, I'm not buying it for COSC certification. If you want that, you buy one of the other ones. As a matter of fact, they're even the same price or cheaper. These anniversary issues cost the same as the deeper dive watches or more. And so, um, yeah, they call the 300 meter watches recreational divers, you know, scuba watches, scuba, scuba watches, you know? So look at this one. I flipped out on this one all night, the silver lung. I'm in love with this watch and I want it so bad. Look at this thing. I'm in love with this one. Look at the orange second hand and the orange minute hand. I can't get over this watch. So that's a special edition called the Silver Lung. And it was a co-op with a diver, you know, U.S. divers to have that aqua, that really cool aqua lung diving logo on there. Um, now, unfortunately they made 300 of these. These went for sale last summer and they're gone. They sold within hours. And this watch was selling for 1900 plus whatever, all the taxes and, and stuff they add to it. But, but I think it's 43, I think it's 43 millimeter. Um, but this watch sold out and it was selling for $1,900. They made 300 of them. And you go look on eBay or Amazon and they're 5,000 bucks. I mean, just like that. Um, so I can't get this one. All right. Um, but I am, when I, when I do call them tomorrow, I am just going to, for the sake, ask them if they have any. Ask if they got any refurbished, any back, whatever. You might as well ask if I'm going to call, right? So um, what do they have if they don't have this one? Well, I'm going to get, I'm looking to get this exact watch, but without that logo. So they have this, but without the logo, just bare silver. And so it's right here. It's called Just the Sea Rambler. What is this? Why does it keep switching to something else? I don't understand. Okay, there it is. You know, as a matter of fact, it looks like they might have just taken the picture of the limited edition one and 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 wiped it out right here because why can't you see uh, the rest of the markers? So I think they just like, we're too lazy to take another shot, but there it is without the logo. So it's the same watch without the logo. And I think it's very handsome. Um, so how much is this suck now? Now, okay. This was my dilemma. They have this watch without see the little orange, the cute orange seconds hand. Let me show you what that watch is. The 1500 C Rambler. It's the same watch, but instead of the orange second hand, it's black. So you can get the 1500 meter COSC certified, right? 1500 meter COSC certified, it's 2400. Now we go back to this one. 
just because I want that little cute orange hand, I'm going to have to revert from the 1500 meter option to the 300 non COSC option because I like that little second hand orange. And guess what? It costs a hundred bucks more. So I'm getting a lesser watch, no certification, and I'm paying $100 more. But honestly, I got to tell you, for me, I don't know if you would agree, that orange secondhand is the deal breaker for me. I think it makes that watch. Would you agree? Now, I think that some people are either going to like that or fall in love with that orange dial or, or this one. Now, what's interesting is I've only, okay, let me go, let's go back to some of the, yeah, special. And rem, mind you, they've only made 300 of these too. So there's only 300 of these 50 anniversary editions. Um, mind you also that the one with the logo sold out in a few hours and there's this one hasn't sold out in a year and a half and you can still get it i wonder why that is it just doesn't make sense to me that this one didn't get picked up too people really want that logo that's the only thing I can think of. And I can see too, because because I got to tell you, that logo is sexy. Look at that. Look how sexy that is. Why does that logo make such a difference? Right? Doesn't it though? God, I love that watch. I got to tell you, I think I'm going to get this watch and I'm not going to wear any of my other watches, at least for a while. Okay, let me show you some of the other ones too, because they got some other ones. Yeah. Okay, so the 50th anniversary, that's the Silver Lung. There's the Shark Hunter 50th anniversary. And I get really good resolution on this Apple Mac. It's a 4K monitor. And how cool is that? I can zoom in for you with my touch iPad. I mean, hey, that's a cool black dial, you know, but but I was looking for some how much is the IWC for comparison? The IWC was fifty six hundred dollars. Fifty six hundred. So this is half the price at MSRP. And look, you're, I don't think you're going to find these used. I couldn't find any. So, so now, now it's not just $2,500. i will know tomorrow, but I think it's going to be $3,000. You know? I think you pretty much want to add 500 bucks for whatever. Uh, you know, that VAT. Here, where is it at? It says something about it. Um, Oh, docs. Uh, somewhere I read about paying and. Uh, anyway, here let's look at some of these some of these dudes. Um. Oh oh oh! Here, check this out. You know what? Before I jump all over the hell, let's finish looking at some of the watches. Then I'll go into the really cool history. You're not going to freaking believe it. Um. Which, after I looked at some of the history, yeah, that's when I kind of flipped out and I kind of got sucked in even more. But look at, uh, okay, we know the Sea Rambler. That's the one I want. Boy, I just can't get over it. That thick ass minute hand. And you know why the minute hand is so thick? Because the hour hand, you don't need that under underwater when you're diving. 
you need to know how many minutes you're down there and that's the important hand to be looking at so they make it nice large luminous and um yeah it's it's great um Okay, now the other ones we haven't seen. Okay, let, now we're going to go to the deeper divers. The 4,000 is a 12,000 meter watch. You know what? Does that one I want have a helium escape valve? I don't think it does. Okay, you see that? They don't need it, and they probably have thinner cases. Let, let's, let's take a look at the spec sheet real quick before we jump. Okay, so this is about it. Um, look, they don't have this one for sale, do they? This orange dial one. That one is pretty damn cool, right? This one is good. Look at that one. That's a good one too, right, with the orange dial? I didn't see that one on the website for sale. Look at, look at this guy being all cool. You know who that is? Mr. Cousteau. Grandson of the famous explorer, Jacques Cousteau. So he did a, he wore this watch right here for historic whatever you know co-op with doxa and he wore a, a special watch they have here you can buy they made it they made, i think there's 1500 of them made what the heck i hear music oh my god there's music playing hold on how do i go to this music What was that? What's going on? Okay. Sorry, I got distracted. Some music started blasting. Okay, so this is called the Doxa Mission 31. And um, yeah, this is the one he wore when he went deep, deep diving. So here's this one. Okay, okay. So this is the one I'm getting. Okay. 42 and a half millimeter. And, and look at the bracelet. Where are you going to get a beaded rice blade bracelet like that, like that? You know, we're not going to find that on any Rolex. We're not going to find that on, on any of our watches. So you're getting something a little completely different, not a little different, completely different. That old school. 60 70 style cushion case uh, coupled with that uh, supposedly extremely comfortable rice bracelet you know they they say it's extremely comfortable right um i don't know why the why the hell they say the movement here is cosc certified because i know it isn't so i'll again clarify them that with them when i um when I called them on the phone, because I specifically said, I specifically read that all of their 300 piece models do not get sent for certification because it's too few watches to be certified. So this is either a typo or I'm mistaken, or maybe they refer to some of the models, not all of them, but I'll figure it out. But now here's what's kind of pissing me off is I want to know if this one is available because I kind of like this orange one. What, what do you like better? This orange version of the one that I want or the silver dial with the orange hands? Man, they're both unique in their own flip-flop way, isn't it? Aren't they? What do you think? 
that one's got to look cool too with the orange now this is a real diver the orange you know is the real diver watch because the whole purpose of it and the whole reason people use it is to get that uh bright luminescent dial so that when they're in the dark deep ocean you know bam they're seeing their tool watch okay so they came out with this orange dial they branded this orange dial they're apparently even though you and i never heard of this company before they're well known for this orange dial and i'm sure you and i regardless of not hearing of the company you know in tv shows and whatever i re i recall seeing watches with these bright orange dials before so i know i've seen them i've just never uh recognized them or paid any particular attention to them yeah the dial pops uh, and what else is cool is they have other dials. Let's take a look at what else is, it, it talks about here. So th this, where they're referring here to this anniversary model will ship um, in November. That is last year. Last year. Oh, this is one that's available. This is the professional model. I'm looking at the C Rambler model. Okay, let's let's take a look here. And let, 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 let me let me go. Let me still look at this brochure here. It says so. So they were making fancy watches. Uh, I'm the ant, Mr. Ant. I'll call you Mr. Ant. Mr. Ant. They were making fancy watches from the 1800s, brother. Hey, is there a delay when I'm talking to you? How would you know that? Um, do me a favor. I'm going to say something and type it as quick as you can. Hello. Oh, you're on your phone anyway. You can't type that quick. Okay, I don't think there's a delay. If it seems like there's a delay from what I'm streaming, tell me and I'll try to fix it. Okay. So let's see. Well, my cursor, like I'm going to read this sentence that I just highlighted. And I don't know. I don't know if there's a delay, whatever. I'm not going to worry about it. So 1967, they came out with the, uh, the sub watches. And it says right here, the watch was chosen by Jack Cousteau and his U.S. divers, as well as Clive Cussler, his hero Dirk Pitt. I, I don't know who that is, but I've seen that name come up in here quite a few times. Dirk Pitt, some famous diver, I guess. So again, this is a 50th anniversary. So they've been in the watch game for a long time. There's the Clive Cussler. Apparently he's a famous explorer. Philip Cousteau in the 1970s using that watch. So, hey, so, you know, 
Well, there you go. There's one piece of history that I wanted to kind of share with you that pulled me into the watch that it really is a diver watch. You know, look, I mean, Rolex, Schmolex. I love Rolex. I got a ton of Rolex, but come on, give me a break. It isn't a diver's watch, you know? And um, to, to be honest, this is bordering. This is a snorkeling watch, man. You know, come on. Even this one is a snorkeling watch because we know divers use high-tech equipment. They use electronic watches that have, you know, all kinds of sensors and freaking technology on it beyond, you know, their, their watches are beyond anything we use. So, you know, this is a snorkeling watch anyway. But what the hell? It is what it is. Technology surpassed anything that these watches can provide for um, the diver nowadays. Okay, uh, the ETA 2824-2. Okay, it says chronometer grade version on this one I'm looking at. You see right here where it says chronometer grade? That's not COSC certified. I think chronometer grade means it's not COSC certified. So I'm pretty sure the one I want right here is not. Okay, now if I now let me go back to Oh, they don't have the professional for sale, the one with the orange dial. Wait, wait, wait. Yeah, in 300, like in that picture. It's not here. There's the silver lung. So that one is not even available, the one that was in that picture. You would if you want that one, you'd have to get the 1500. Let me look, let me look. Why is this? Come on. Ah, it doesn't have Oh, it looks different than that one in the brochure, doesn't it? Look, it looked different. I gotta pull it up. Oh, here's the brochure right here. There's the brochure. No, that's that's it. Except instead of three hundred, it's fifteen hundred. Okay. Same watch. Oh, that's the three hundred. See, they got a picture of it here at the bottom, the one that that guy's wearing. And then when you scroll up, mine is that one. And these guys who design these websites, I'll tell you what, it's a better website than Rolex, though. Okay, let me take a look at what this looks like again. Orange with green fluorescent. And all black markers. And then I look at this one. It's white markers instead of black markers with white fluorescent instead of the cool green fluorescent. They screwed this watch up. Okay, see how it's white? white indices white loomed okay it's all white loomed doesn't the other loom look better yeah look at look at look at the green loom Fuck the green loom i would get that watch now that i'm looking at the differences i would get this one and even the second hand has that cool square green loom second hand.
that white's ugly now when you look at this look how cool the green is okay so they really are steering me to that 300 meter silver dial that i like that's for sure i mean any way i look at it i like the look of it it's got that vintage look doesn't it have a vintage look to it and because it's the 300 meter guy it doesn't have the helium escape valve hence i'm assuming it has a thinner case it looks slimmer and so this is a perfect daily wear yeah yeah i love it okay so there's the 4000 here's the big boy watch we didn't look at that one yet okay so the 4000 meter professional look at that this has an added feature that's the power reserve indicator over there at seven o'clock so it's telling you your your watch is safe to dive with because heck if you don't have a power reserve indicator how do you know your watch didn't stop working for some odd reason or whatever you know i mean it's kind of cool and they call call it a safe dive meter yeah it is a cool power reserve i think that bezel is very cool too very functional who was it today they were talking about austin daniels and functional bezels well here you go if you got ocd whatever dd bdd ddbdb there's your functional bezel for you Okay, now what as, I don't know what that means, professional or sapphire bezel. Oh, look at that. Oh, sapphire bezel. You can get a sapphire bezel on this one. Ooh, ooh. Look at that. I wonder what uh, that indicator at 12 o'clock is. I don't think it's not mother of pearl. I wonder if it's just a loom spot. So how much is this one? Look at that. Online saving price, $3,000. Similar to your Omega Seamaster, huh? So it's got a four, four hertz movement, 42 hour power reserve, 21 rubies. I don't know what an Etacron index assembly is. And it, look, it still has the cushion case design, but it says here that They've redesigned it and they've made it more ergonomic, rounded edges. Um, the case is pressed or made out of one mold. Uh, I guess it's some kind of a stainless. It's playing that music probably for you too. So it says here that I'll read this. Uh, I'll read this, what it says up here. It's got a built-in automatic helium release valve. Garage door. It's got a power reserve indicator. Yeah.
Diameter excluding the crown protection is 44 millimeter. 47 millimeter including the crown. So it's a 44 millimeter watch, this one. Hey, this is pretty nice. I bet you this one looks really slick in person. And I can guarantee you that bezel probably looks like glass, right? It probably looks like that, um, like the 50 Fathoms, I don't know. Or maybe like your Seamaster. Okay, so that's a $3,000 deep sea dweller, really. Okay, um, Shark Hunter, they got the 4,000 meter Shark Hunter. If you got to split by all means, anytime, just say goodbye and hallelujah. We'll uh, see you next time, brother. All right. I'm just into my Doxa watch right now. I want to. So the Shark Hunter is the black model. I think that's what I'm figuring out. It's the more traditional black dial watch that's what i think 21 jewels um okay here's the oh and here it is with the, let's look at it with a sapphire bezel oh you know what you're losing some of the functionality of the bezel you see how it's uh you lose the uh the benz gauge the benz uh meter you lose that. Now you only have the minutes on the outer dial. So you're definitely giving up functionality for for the bezel. I I would rather have the functionality of that bezel because it kind of makes the watch it gives it a vintage look and it it's a feature that other watches don't have quite simply oh no you know what hold on let me look at that professional sapphire bezel does yeah it doesn't have it i thought maybe the shark one i thought maybe the shark one had it or didn't have it Shark Hunter Sapphire Bezel, yeah. Um, okay, here's the Mission 31 watch. This is the one that that gentleman Cousteau took down on the mission. It's a pretty watch, but again, why in the world did they go with the white loom that green loom looked magnificent. It's, it's, I'm kind of beside myself. Do you agree that that, that, that orange there, look at that there, look at that. You gotta be kidding me. Look at the loom, the green loom. <sighs> Wait a minute. Maybe it is green loom, and I'm not seeing it in the in the picture, huh? Because this is the Mission 31 watch. You see what I mean? That is it. You just can't see the green loom except in certain lighting. How, you know what I mean? Yeah, because look it, this is it. This is it. Okay, there's another question I got to ask them. Let me write that down. I'm going to write that down. Ask about the loom. Is it all green? And then what else was I going to ask them about the COSC certification? on the 300P 
pieces. There's that music again. Well, I guess we'll rock out every few minutes to that. Okay, let's see what this guy did here with his uh, mission 31, Fabian Cousteau. There he is wearing the watch. There is the man, the legend. Okay, yeah, so maybe they are all pretty cool with the loom. I, I think so. Okay, I think it's safe to say they all have that keep cool, really green loom, um, unless you're getting the one that I want which it's going to be that green. Yeah, it does have it too. You can see the green. You can see the green in mine there. Definitely you can see it. For sure in that one you can see it. In the one that I want. Okay, I'm still stuck on I'm still stuck on wanting to go out with this watch. This is my watch that I want right now. Okay. Now there's the 5000 meter Why this doesn't click? Come on. 5,000 military. PVD. Physical, physical vapor disposition. I didn't know that's what PVD stands for. I bet you none of the guys on the watch channel know what PVD stands for. Because I've never heard anybody mention it. Physical vapor disposition. That must have something to do with the process of removing all of the immaterial impurities or some shit and wa and vape and, and water from the metals to make it hard, moisture, physical vapor disposition. Whatever. Okay. That has a 2892 movement in it, 2600 bucks. So besides whatever taxes, et cetera, there's going to be, um, their, their watches are pretty affordable. They don't make a gang load of them. In here, this one, they make 5000 The one I'm going to get, they make 300 Let's see what else they got. This is a, a 6000 diver. Ooh, that one, that one's probably got some hella loom on it. Look at that. That one's got some hella loom on it. And you know what? I just noticed on this watch, because it's such a deep diver at 6,000 meters, look how big they made the loom uh, indicators on the markers. A gigantic. And again, only $2,500. This, this watch is cheaper than the one I'm going to pay Three thousand four. So I'm really paying for wanting to be, you know, wanting that special look that it has. Okay, so those are all their watches. Those are all of them. And then, oh, you know, you know what actually was cool. And then they have some accessories, you know, bracelets, whatever. But you know what was cool was this was um in the previous models there's the black lung this was a previously issued model look at this one i am not moved where'd it go previous models black lung very cool watch that was a previous year issue.
again that one sold out in hours from when it was issued i dig that one too and then they had another previous model um the dive star poseidon look at with the yellow that's cool too and you might recognize that logo more than you would recognize the other one because this is a european dive organization called poseidon and you know notice the bracelet and again that cushion case that's the same case i'm going to get on my watch look at that case isn't the case freaking cool and the bracelet Okay, and then uh, previous models here again. There was uh, there was another one. I didn't like this one at all. Oh wait, there was. What about this professional? Oh oh, this is the one that was in the picture in the brochure. The model that I want to get, but with the orange dial and instead of orange hands, it's got green loomed hands. Okay, so I would go for this one too. Look at it says right here at the bottom introduced in 2016 and sold out immediately. So there you go. For some reason the silver well they're iconic for their orange dial. That's what they're iconic for. So now I know why the silver dial wanna I want to get didn't sell out yet but the orange version of it did. And, you know, it sold out immediately in 2016. Yeah, I'd rather have this one than the one that I even want. This is the best one. But you can't get it. And I guarantee you this watch is probably... You know, huge on eBay. I don't, why does it go to other sites that I don't type? That is the weirdest thing. Look at that. You see? How much they... Vintage. Let me see here. These are old ones. Vintage, vintage. Thirty five hundred. Look at thirty eight people watching this one. Here's one of here's here's one of them right here. That one that was sold out in twenty sixteen. Thirty eight people watching, and they're gonna and whoever bought it bought it for nineteen hundred, seventeen hundred, a couple of grand, right? So they enjoyed it, and they're gonna sell it for a thousand more, fifteen hundred more. Yeah, there, there's, oh, Jesus, scratch the hell. Do you see that? It's scratched to hell. Says bye.
and people are looking at this watch. So look at how much they're going for all these doxes. Here, 3,900 pre-owned. Dude, you can't buy them anywhere here. So once you get it here, it's like, I, I don't know. I'll find out tomorrow. I mean, you obviously can buy them, but you can't look at them anywhere. It doesn't look like they're all over the place too much. Anyway, whatever. Yeah, they sell a lot more than they are on the website, right? Here you go. There's a Shark Hunter Age of Watch 2016. So here, he's selling it for what he got it for. This guy's selling it for what he got it for. Here's the Project Aware one that we saw. 3000 They're selling it for ex pretty much exactly what they got it for, too, because I think you can get it for 3000 Here's that Project Aware. They got it right here. Project Aware. Oh, no, it was a previous model, but I think it was ugly. Project Aware. This blue dial I thought was pretty ugly. So they're selling this for 3000 See, sold out. So that's what they're doing. They're getting these. Limited edition ones that are very cool that people dig on. They're selling them out. People are selling them for more. Yeah, I don't like the blue. It doesn't really... How is the blue supposed to help you see through water? That makes no sense. That's a crappy watch. Crappy watches and cheap whores. Okay. Look at, they have some other ones. What the hell are these? Slide, slide, slide. The Sub 800 Ti Professional. Okay, so we pretty much got an idea for what these watches look like. Um, one, of the, one, of the, one of the things I wanted to do was just really quick look at the movement, and the one that I want is a 2824 ETA-2. And if I go to watch base... 2824 ETA-2. And that's going to be right here. So this is what's in that watch. And we've got 25 joules, 4 hertz, nice looking movement, really is, even though you're not going to see it. Here are all the watches that use this motor. So this is interesting. Hamilton uses it in all, in all of their khaki watches. Let's see who else uses it. Tissot, Baum and Mercier. Lots of Hamiltons. Rado. Rado uses them. More Tissot. Hey, let's enjoy some music. 
Hoorah. <laughs> yeah, I dig it. <laughs> yeah, okay, so now Sertina Sin Stoa Steinhardt. You know, I'm trying to look for a little bit more impressive brands here, to be honest, but it's okay. Long jeans. Tudor. Oh, here we go. Listen to this. You know, this makes me feel even more warm and fuzzy inside my cold little heart. This is the same movement in a Rolex. I... I Am I, am I crazy or was I under the impression that Tudor was in-house and Rolex made? Did you get that impression or not? Because I thought that was my, what I understood to be the case. Now I'm learning differently here that all of these tutors have ETA movements. So the Tudor Heritage Black Bay, 41 millimeter, 36 millimeter. Okay, let's ask Clive about that one tomorrow or something. Or whenever I'm gonna hit him up, I'll ask Archie in a super chat or something. Because I'm seeing Tudor has all of these watches with ETA movements. Okay, that is it is what it is. This isn't wrong. They're here and they have them. So your friend got a Tudor. Uh, you know, the Tudors are cool looking. I was looking at the Tudors um, yesterday. You know, when I was at, when I was watch gazing at the at the mall boutiques. Hey, uh, all of these tutors use that movement. Good God, all of them! Wow, wow. So, and they're using specifically this one that's in my that's in my uh, Doxa. Boy, don't they all look like Rolexes to you? Look, if you I was scrolling here, and I didn't, you did, you could, you didn't read the names. Wouldn't you just think these are all Datejust? Oh. What does Rolex really? Does Tudor really make this many variations of shitters? Oh my God, someone help me. I'm overdosing on Tudor shitters. Hey. Okay, well, there it is. So that's the movement. So we've investigated the movement a little bit. And we know that not all too many watch brands actually use that movement. There weren't that many when we went through this. It was Hamilton, Tissot, Tudor, um, Ratto, Certina. That was it. Long Jeans had a couple. Flieger. A couple of sins. Uh, that, that was pretty interesting. This is so this is a this is basically a Tudor caliber. This is a caliber that is really being made and manufactured to go in Hamilton and Tudors. Okay. Okay. Oh my God, look at that. Look at that watch. Holy smokes, look at that watch. 
Oh my God, I'm in love with this thing. That looks better than. That looks better than half the shitters these guys are looking at. Half the time they're looking at shitters. I wonder if I, I wonder if Crappy uh, seen any of these, but he wasn't. He didn't want to dive watch. All right, let me see here. Um, this is what was really cool. I didn't show you this. Um, it was the history of who Doxa is. We know about their cool diving brand that they branded. We know about Jacques Cousteau and his... Uh, family that is so proudly uh, carrying the Doxa brand further. <clears throat> but look, look at the history, though. This is going to impress the shit out of you. It really did me. 1889, the establishment of the Doxa factory in Lalakla, Sweden, under the name Georges Ducommen, Fabrique Doxa. Georges Ducommen, fabricator of Doxa. 1889, buddy. I mean, how many watch companies go back even to 1889? You're talking only the old greats. Okay, look, he requested the first patent for, maybe it's not the first, but for a movement designed for dashboard of cars. Maybe it was. I mean, 1907, come on, man. Car cars were just invented in the 1907. So... Look, for him to have achieved a patent on, uh, look, he wasn't making ETA, he wasn't using ETA 2824s in 1920, in 1907. So the guy was making his own freaking watch, right? Okay, um, 1910, three years later, he registered the factory under the Doxa watch factory. Okay, eight years later, he so he's expanding. He made he made a name for himself with this uh, watch dashboard, and now he made got into a factory. He's working, and then it says here by 1918 he has he's rocking out. This music in the background. Two hundred and yeah, some hundreds of employees. So, and there's a picture of the factory. Hundreds of employees, nineteen eighteen, and that's in Switzerland. So, this is a watch that is very deeply rooted in Switzerland, as deep as. California is rooted into the Old West. Okay. Look, and then he became vice president of this, vice president of that, president of Swiss horology. Okay, now this is what fascinated me the most. This is what was really cool. In 1936, it was uncool that he died at, at the age of 68. However, the company was taken over by his daughter's husband, his daughter was married to the grandson of Ulysse Nardine, Jacques Nardine, a famous watchmaker, right? So Ulysse Nardine's grandson took over Doxa. Is that cool or what? I bet you nobody knows that. And then 1939, look at the watches they were making. I mean, these are cool-ass-looking watches. I would 
die to get my hand on one of these vintage pieces. I, I can imagine they only go for ten thousand dollars though. Look at those. Those are amazing. Those are not for sale. Those are nineteen thirty nine wristwatches. And then uh and then what else happened? Goes on, goes forward, a lot of achievements, supplies the entire German soccer team during the championships. They came up with some really hip watches and won some awards. And then in 67, that was like their next staple achievement. They, bam, that whole sub with the orange dial. Right, I doubt you, yeah, who knows where the hell you would find those. So, uh, so yeah, so this is where their new acclaim to fame came, is now with the new dive watch. And, and look at that again, the rice beads, I'm loving it. Those rice beads are really cool. Rice bead bracelet. Look, I'm, I'm never gonna put a bracelet like that on a Rolex. You're never gonna put a bracelet like that on pretty much any of the other watches you've got. But this bracelet belongs on this watch and you can have fun with one of these kind of bracelets with this watch. Oh, this is kind of cool. 1969 to 1979. These Doxa subs were the official watch of the elite diving troops of the Swiss Army. Of the Swiss Army, not like the Sudanese Army or the Taiwanese Army or the freaking Italian Army, but of the Swiss Army. Wouldn't you think the Swiss Army, being in Switzerland, are going to pick the best dive watch that's made in Switzerland? Why didn't they pick Rolex? Why didn't they pick anything else? They picked fucking Doxa. That's huge. I mean, that's like, that's like, that's like, uh, if you, if that's like, if you are in a high top tier gun competition, a top tier rifle competition. And you live in Germany or Italy. You, you, you got to use a German or an Italian gun. They make the best guns. I mean, you, you're gonna, what are you going to use, a Japanese rifle? <laughs> oh, man, that kind of blowed me away thinking about that right now. And that's for 10 years. 10 years. I don't know what they changed to in 1979. That would be interesting to find out. What did they switch to? But but it's good to know that this watch has gravado. It's got substance. It's got history. It's got... Now, since in 97, the Jenny family purchased it. So it's still in Switzerland. There you go. Everything you wanted to know about Doxa. I think I really studied the brand enough to feel comfortable pulling the trigger on it. This would be a great beater watch.
They even try to uh, impress with high type horology pieces, 18 karat rose gold. Starry case, world time. Hey, you know what? Might not might have not been bad for crappy. Kind of looks nice. This doesn't show the prices here. I mean, it doesn't look and they're limited. Five hundred pieces. I mean, these are the kind of dials that. Yeah, these are the kind of dials that H Moser and those guys do you know those really fancy starry dials and it's a world time I wonder how much that is this one's stainless steel anyway all right partner I think uh I think I'm going to call it a night on the live stream. But thanks for hanging out with me, Mr. Ant. That was pretty uh, pretty cool, you helping me go through uh, doing that rebuttal and analysis of the doxa. And I really actually did uh, uncover a lot more information about it going through it with you this last hour. Um, definitely uncovered a lot more information about it. And I'm still back here to the same picture. This is the one that I want. What do you think of this one then? You think after knowing what I'm liking, after what am I just discussing it and all, this this is the one that I should get, right? I, I think I'm aspiring to that vintage feel and look of this thin cushion case. Uh, I... I I'm loving those sick orange, giant orange hands in the second hand. I'm digging it. I'm digging it. Yeah. And yeah, and I mean, it really is Swiss made. 100%. Even the Edda movements are Swiss made. You know, those are made in Switzerland. So there you go. Yeah, I know. Um, well, the the thing is, is when you go to, when you go to some of the watches, like the one that I wanted here, it says reserve now, but this, they didn't update this link. And when you click it, it's a bad link. And I already found out from a different part of the website that it was sold out within hours. So I'm going to call them. And then when you go to some of the other ones, uh, when you go to some of the other ones, uh, like the, the previous models, they'll tell you sold out. See, sold out. And if you go to the one that I want, it says, buy it, buy it now. Yeah, that's why the bad link, because it was sold out and they never put a, uh, you know, but yeah, you're right. I'm going to call them first tomorrow. And, uh, and I'm going to try to get a discount because I don't know why this was the most expensive watch. You know, the one that sold out, look at how much this one is. The really cool one that sold out within a few hours with the Silver Lung Aqualung logo was $2,200. $2,200. The one that sold out. And the one that didn't sold out 
is not 2200 instead of 2200 it's 2500 so they want me to pay $300 more for the watch that I'm second picking so I'm gonna ask them if they would be kind enough to give me a coupon code to save me the three hundred dollars to drop to three hundred make it the same price as the other please that way because it's gonna come back up another three hundred after they add all that VAT tax or whatever I'm assuming that I read about somewhere is gonna get added so let them take three hundred off and then add three hundred back It'll bring it back to 2500 Look, if I can get this piece for 2500 delivered, I'll be happy. I'll be happy. Well, when I when I click when you uh when you it's music again here. Let it rock out from okay. What I got, I actually got the idea of asking them to match the price because when I click the buy it now link, as you'll see, and if you add it to the cart, as you will see, look here, they can make a special price just for moi in that there is a coupon code section in the cart so they definitely offer coupon codes so you know i'm gonna play them like a fiddle hey guys i'm a rolex fan no nah, <laughs> nah. I'm just going to be like, hey, you know, I am new to your brand. I just discovered it. I've been on your website for two days straight. And uh, and uh, I'm hooked. So hook a, hook a first timer up and make me feel warm and fuzzy inside with a nice coupon code. And, and I feel that it should be at least no more than the one that I really wanted. The Aqualung. By the way, do you have any of those hanging around? I'll pay 300 more for that one. <laughs> you know? Because, um, look at, when you go to eBay, you go to eBay here, and if you type in that Aqualung, Doxa Sub 300 Aqualung, Where is it at? Oh, it's called Silver Lung. Sorry. Aqua Lung is uh, Jethro Tull. <laughs> Look how much they're going for. Wait. Wait a minute. Right there. They're there. No, wait. I saw them all day. Hold on. Let me find it. Um. Silver lung. I think I got to put one word. Call it one word. Silver lung. Huh. Twenty one hundred. That's what it was for sale for. I don't know why I'm not exactly. Here's one, thirty-five hundred. I think we looked at this earlier. Right. No, that's different. That's that scuffed one. You know, I'm not that good with eBay, but when I pulled that up, I found it yesterday, and I swear it was five thousand dollars. People were selling them for five thousand bucks.
There's a few doxes on here, but man, they're all ugly. Yeah, three thousand. Ain't none of them. Uh, ain't none of them just going for free. Ain't none of them going for free, and they're they're kind of scratched. I mean, really? Well, they're diver watches. They're total diver watches, right? So you expect them going to be used and scratched. But you're not going to – I didn't expect them to be all scuffed up and people on eBay are selling them for this much. 3000 Huh. The vintage ones, 5000 yeah. Yeah, the older ones are all the, you know, I got to tell you, it looks like any decent watch goes up in value. Any decent mechanical watch, it doesn't matter if it's an ETA movement. Sometimes that makes it worth more. Like the stupid uh, Zenith Daytona. It's worth more with the freaking ETA movement in it. Um, and so look at this is a good example. These diver watches, just because they're old, you can't get them. They're nostalgic and vintage, and they're they're yeah, no, yeah, you can't get these styles new. Look at this one. This is a GMT one. That is pretty cool looking. A Caribbean model. So, yeah, so I guess if you want something, you're going to pay for it. Just like, look, if I want that one with the Diver Lung logo on it, the Diver logo on it, I'm going to have to pay a little extra and get it on eBay. Oh, you know what? Maybe it was Amazon is where I saw them. That's where I saw them, brother, was Amazon. They all came up on Amazon. Watch. Doxa Sub... 300 silver lung. Congratulations. You have been selected to take part in our anonymous survey. Please take our 30 second questionnaire and to say thank you. Oh my God. Jesus. No, I don't remember. It must have been eBay then. But, yeah, it must have been eBay then. But, you know, that's actually kind of a good sign that you can't get it on Amazon. You can't get it on Amazon. That's a good sign. Maybe you can. Let me check again. Oh, yeah, there you No? No. That's a good sign, you know, and it's said on there, they're exclusive, no ADs, no, just no, um, it, it, I think there might have been one U.S. distributor in New York, and that's the number I'm calling tomorrow, and if you, and if no, that doesn't exist, then, then you have to get it straight from Sweden and pay that VAT tax. So that's what I'm going to find out tomorrow. I think that's all I got to say about that watch, brother. So, yeah, yeah. I'm going to call and find out. Okay, bro. I'm going to let you go. I've been at this for a while with you now, and it was a lot of fun. Thank you again, and I'll see you in the other chat rooms. Peace out. Good night. Thanks for your help with looking at this.
Mr. Ant. I gotta figure out how to end the stream. I don't know how to do any of this stuff. Where do you do this? I really honestly do not know. <laughs> yeah, right. I'm going to try to figure this out here. There we go. Stop broadcast. Found it. <laughs>